Hello everybody, it's Brian for GadgetUnit.com and in this video I'll be showing you what's on my iPhone, the Jailbreak Edition. So I've been putting this video off for quite a while because I wanted to wait until IntelliScreen X was released, but there's no release date for it, so I don't really want to wait to do this video any longer, plus I've been getting requests for this. And I want to get this video done so that after I show you everything, I could go ahead and uninstall most of it and go back to my sort of classic setup, I'd call it, where I just have two rows and pretty much that's it at least on my home screen so I could get rid of most of the tweaks that I have installed. So throughout this video, my voice is sort of messed up this week. It's been dry, plus the heater that's been on all the time because it's really cold lately. I have to sort of cough every 30 seconds or so to sort of get my voice back a little bit. Anyway, here is the lock screen. And as you can tell, the top and bottom grabbers are removed. The slide to unlock text is gone as well. All that was done thanks to a free tweak called Custom LS from Cydia. And I guess I'll go ahead and show you the settings for that. So going down here to, as you can tell, I have a whole bunch of things installed. I, this is way more than I've ever had installed after being jailbroken ever before. I've been doing this since like 2008 and never once have I had this many individual tweaks installed. So it's a little bit overwhelming. But like I said, after I do this video, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of pretty much most of these. And then I'll do another follow-up video in a couple of weeks or so to show, you, to show you my more simple setup. So custom LS is right here. These are the settings. Pretty simple and straightforward. And here's my lock screen. As you can tell, the widget is probably the most eye-catching thing here. That's done through a pack called iWidgets Pack S. That's a paid pack for the free tweak called iWidgets. So that's where that came from. You could actually interact with it a little bit. So you could tap the bottom area and it'll go ahead and show you your forecast. So that's kind of cool. Now, if you look at the icons, you can see that they have sort of an iOS 6 style design to it. And that was thanks to Iconomatic. And that's done across every icon, which is kind of cool. The 4x4 folders are done through Springtomize 3, as you can see. And, oh, games folder, Flappy Bird, that's going to be removed soon as well. The dock has the cover flow effect, and there are five icons there. That's thanks to Springtomize 3. And as you can tell, I have five columns, also thanks to Springtomize 3. So now I'm going to go ahead and go in through each individual package that I have in Cydia. I'm going to show you everything and talk about it just a little bit. For some of these, I might actually go into the settings. Some of them I won't for the sake of speeding up this video, which will probably be very long anyway. So the first up is Activator. Everybody knows what this is about, but it allows you to use certain gestures to perform different things or uh, open different apps, for example. So one of the things that you can do is use three fingers to, uh, to pinch on your screen and move to the next song, for example. That's just one of the many different things that you can do with it. Right now, the only thing that I have set up to do is for the triple click home button. It just brings up the display recorder prompt so I could record my screen. Below Activator is a paid tweak called Ad Blocker, which allows you to block advertisements on websites, which frees up memory and the CPU resources, it loads pages faster. So those are a few of the very good benefits of Ad Blocker. Next up is a free tweak called Always Clear, and if you bring down Notification Center, instead of having to tap on the X for something that you'd like to get rid of, the Clear button is there automatically. Next up is sort of an add-on for App Addict, so App Addict is right here, and it allows you to install cracked apps in a pretty easy way, actually. As you can tell, I haven't opened it in a long time, and I probably don't need to because I can't remember the last time I actually had a cracked app installed onto my device. But that's basically what App Addict allows you to do. And App List, that's more of a system thing. App Sync, everybody knows what that's about. Below that is a paid theme called Icon. And this was a very popular theme for iOS 6. And they're sort of trying to port it over to iOS 7. And the only thing from this theme that I actually use is, or are, the status bars. And the status bar at the top. That's pretty much the only element from it that I use. Next up is Browser Changer, which allows you to change the default browser that you open links in. So in my case, I'm using Chrome and it also allows you to open addresses, for example, in Google Maps if you have it installed. Next up is CC Hide, which allows you to hide certain elements in Control Center. So here's mine. I don't have the media controls there. I don't have the, um, what is it called? The AirPlay or AirDrop area either. And it does support conditional settings. So if you are listening to music, that certain section will pop back up. If you do happen to have an AirPlay enabled device on your network, the AirPlay option will be available to you. So it'll just hide certain things where they're not in use or when they don't need to be there to save some room on your screen. So that's pretty good. Next up is CC settings, which allows you to add 
custom toggles to your control center as you can tell here so here's my first page with Wi-Fi location services airplane mode do not disturb and Bluetooth next up I have cellular data LTE toggle screenshot that's what that does uh, reboot and respring below that is the comm center patch for iOS 7 and if you want to get down and dirty with your carrier files you'll need to install this patch to actually allow iOS to use your modified files because if you don't they're probably not going to work next up is custom ls i showed you that earlier and let's go down to d display recorder allows you to record your screen i've done some videos using this in the past and it works really well i got a recent update to allow higher frame rates and custom bitrate settings for upper end devices which is kind of nice below that is a free tweak called dock shift which allows you to change the background of your dock a little bit and let's see fake time warner if you use the Time Warner Cable TV app, you're going to need to install that to get past the uh, you are jailbroken screen. Because if you don't, that's all you're going to see. The app won't log in or do anything for you. And as you can see, it thinks I'm on Wi-Fi, so it is playing live TV. And that's thanks to 3G Unrestrictor. That's all the way on the bottom. I'll get to that a little bit later. So let's go back to F. So that was fake Time Warner. Next up is Fancy, which allows you to change some of the colors on different UI elements of iOS. So my notification center is black. My control center is blue, as you saw earlier. The heads-up display is yellow. The spotlight area is green, and my keyboard is red. So it looks kind of nice. There are a couple of other UI elements that you can change, and you could pretty much pick any color you would like. So that's a pretty nice tweak. I think it was 99 cents. So if you want to quickly change some of the colors, that's what you have to do. Next up is Gridlock 2.0, and this allows you to put icons anywhere you want on your grid for your home screen. So if I want to put this camera icon up in the middle, I can do that. Or if I want to put it in the bottom left corner, I can do that as well. So that's basically what Gridlock does for you. There are no settings for it. All you have to do is install it and start placing your icons wherever you'd like. For some reason, my others folder was moved all the way over to the left. So there we go. Everything's back to normal. And it looks like another one messed up as well. So the stock folder should go over here. Jailbreak folder should go there. And looks like a folder just disappeared, which I think is a bug with Springtimize 3 and not um, Gridlock. So that's one thing I noticed. If you try to move some things around and they just disappear, then when you respring your device, any folder or, excuse me, icon that's in that folder is going to reset. So that's a bummer for me. That's Spring to my 3 for you. It was rushed, in my opinion. There were very many bugs at the start, so he is ironing out those bugs, but to me, I think he should have just waited to get some of the more obvious bugs fixed. Their, their beta testers probably didn't do a good job, in my opinion, because a lot of bugs are definitely here. Next up is Hidden, set, uh, hidden Settings 7, which brings you the internal springboard settings that were discovered last summer. That's what those do. And I do have some modifications here. So under Animation Overrides, I brought that all the way down. The Slow Factor, which speeds up most of the animations in iOS 7. For Screen Fade Animation, I brought the Backlight Duration down because when you turn on your phone or turn it off, the backlight slowly turns on or slowly turns on. This is more of an instant feel. And if we go to lock screen, if we scroll down way over here, um, this first one. So what this does is it allows you to just move a little bit on your lock screen to actually unlock it. Because before you have to actually slide your lock screen all the way over to do it. Here, all you have to do is slide just a little bit. And it will go ahead and lock your screen for you. And I believe that is the last modification that I have here for the internal springboard settings. So I'm looking through my camera's LCD uh, display, so it's kind of hard to see sometimes. Next up is iBattery Info, and when you plug in your device to charge, it'll go ahead and bring up a little pop-up window that gives you some information about your battery, including your raw um, capacity, the max capacity if it's fully charged, the number of charging cycles, the serial number for the battery, and a little bit of information on the power source which includes the watts and the amperage output. So that's a neat little tweak to have. And next up is Iconomatic, which allows you to do some customizations to your icons. As you can tell here, all of my icons have sort of an iOS 6 look to them. There are some other things to do, but that's pretty much all I uh, really wanted to do 
with this particular tweak. Next up is iFile, which most people should know about already. It's basically a really good and very well integrated file browser for iOS. You can browse any file and folder on your device's file system. And it also allows you to browse remote locations such as FTP servers and Dropbox. Next up is Infinite Tweet 2, which allows you to use TwitLonger for many different Twitter clients. I use it with TweetBot, and sometimes when you want to type more than 140 characters, you would have to manually go into your web browser, go to twitlonger.com, and make your post that way. But Infinite Tweet allows you to do that from right within your Twitter client, which is nice. Next up is iWidgets, which I showed you earlier. All you have to do to actually use that tweak is tap and hold on any blank area on your home screen, and up comes the widgets menu, and you could add any widget that you would like. Again, the one I'm using is HT Forecast. Here are the different settings you can do. Then you just add it just like that. You can move them around like so. Pretty nice tweak if you want to get widgets on your home screen. This isn't the most appealing widget that I have, but for me it's the most complete in terms of what I wanted, which was a big clock, my weather forecast, the date, and maybe a forecast like that. So we were at iWidgets. And below that is the iWidgets Pack S. That's the one that had the HTC widget and pretty much most of those other ones that you saw there. Next up is Local IAP Store, which allows you to get cracked in-app purchases, which much like cracked apps, I haven't used this in a very long time. Below that is Nitrous, which allows you to accelerate the web browsing speed in non-Apple apps. So when you're using Safari, apps are gonna be using the Nitro JavaScript engine, and then pretty much any third-party app or tweak will not, so this greatly speeds up most web page load times. Next up is Photo Blackground, which when you're looking at photos in the Photos app, instead of showing a white background and then switching to a black background once you actually tap on it to remove everything else, it will go ahead and show a black background all the time, which is nice. Next up is ProTube, a paid application, which allows you to, I can't get to it now because my jailbreak folder is gone, obviously, but it allows you to, maybe it shows up in Spotlight. Let me go ahead and open it up that way. Yep. So this allows you to browse YouTube and download and stream certain videos, or any video for that matter. It allows you to download them. I've been using this to download all of my daily YouTube videos to watch over LTE, of course, thanks to T-Mobile's truly unlimited data plan. That's nice to have again. AT&T got rid of mine over two years ago, so it's nice to be able to not have to worry about how much data I can use monthly. Anyway, that was ProTube. Next up is Repower, and when you hold the uh, the power button, you'll see some information here. So it shows you your device's uptime. I rebooted my device nine and a half hours ago. You can uh, reboot your device and respring your device from there as well. Next up is RetroArc, which is an all-in-one emulator, which allows you to play N64 games, Game Boy Color games, PlayStation games, and a number of other consoles, all from right within that app. It's really deep in terms of what it can do, and it works extremely well for most games. Of course, this is on an iPhone 5S, so your performance may vary on your particular device. It also supports pretty much any external device that you want to use for playing games, such as made for iPhone controllers, you could use Bluetooth keyboard, and some other devices, such as a PS3 controller, for instance. Next up is Share Widget for iOS 7, so if I go over to my Today page, you can see that we do have a number of uh, social options, Twitter, Facebook, email, or uh, SMS or iMessage thing, which allows you to just tap on it, and you can customize, or excuse me, compose anything you want. Next up is Spring to Mice 3, and as I mentioned earlier, I think that this tweak was rushed. In terms of what it can do, not as much as Spring to Mice 2 in my opinion, and of course it is filled with bugs, but he is fixing things fairly quickly. Basically what Spring to Mice 3 allows you to do is a lot of small customizations to iOS. As you can see here, these are all the different things that you can do, at least at this point in time. Uh, let me show you my folder setup real quick. These are all of my options for my folders, if you happen to be interested. Uh, here are my dock settings, if you happen to be interested in those as well. Uh, here are my icon settings. Here's where I hide or hid all of my icons that I don't want. Um, lock screen settings, I don't have anything going on there. Page settings. Um, what else? The status bar, I don't have anything modified there. So that's pretty much Spring to Mice 3. Next up, I have status bar fix 2 installed, which is what fixes the uh, missing status bar in a lot of different apps. or Not missing, rather, but it's pretty much where the status bar stays there when it should actually be hidden, so that fixes most of the problems that people have. 
Next up is swipe selection, which allows you to use the keyboard gestures to move across different things. So for example, if I type this is a test, you could just swipe across the keyboard to move the cursor. Or if you start from the shift key or the backspace key, you could actually select and highlight text like this. So that's pretty convenient a lot of the time. I thought that it would get in the way of my typing and it does just a little bit, but making those mistakes will actually allow you to learn to actually lift your fingers up more instead of sort of dragging them along the keyboard when you're going to different keys. Next up I have T-Mobile Zeppelin logos, which changes the carrier logo up in the corner to the more T-Mobile logo there. So that's what I have installed for Zeppelin. I don't use any other Zeppelin icons and if you're still don't know what Zeppelin is, it basically allows you to change your carrier logo at the top to whatever text you want or to pretty much whatever image you'd like. Next up I have Video Pace which allows you to speed up the playback speed of videos. So if I go into the settings real quick, here are all of your speed options. I usually go to 100 times or 100% faster which is pretty much two times speed and that allows me to watch twice as many videos in the same amount of time. So that is pretty much why. So if I play this video, you'll see that it is played back at twice the speed. As you see there. So that's what Video Pace does, and it's, for me, I like it. Because like I said, it allows me to watch twice as many videos in half the amount of time. Videos do look a little bit weird because everything is sped up twice as fast, and the audio is twice as fast as well, but not fast enough to where you can't understand what's being said. Next up is Winterboard, which allows you to actually theme your device. That's, that's pretty much self-explanatory. It's been around for ages. Next up is Zeppelin, which is actually what manages the carrier icons and text at the top, as I just mentioned. Last up is 3G Unrestrictor, which allows you to trick your device into thinking that you're actually on Wi-Fi. So you could use this for software updates. You could use this for apps like Time Warner Cable TV, because usually with this app, you have to be on Wi-Fi to watch live content elsewhere. Uh, as you can sell or tell, it thinks I'm on Wi-Fi, so that's why that works. Um, so those are just a couple of examples of 3G Unrestrictor. And that's pretty much it right now. That is everything that I have installed on my iPhone. Once again, as soon as I finish recording this video, I'm going to get rid of most of these tweaks because, frankly, I just don't need them. As cool and nice as they are, I just don't need them. So I, I'm just going to go back to my simple, classic setup so that's it with this video. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback about this or anything else, feel free to leave those down below in the comments area. And as I mentioned earlier, when I tried moving around the folders, anything that disappears is just going to reset once you respring, so I'll have to get that sorted out again. That's it with my video. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions about this or anything else, feel free to leave those down below in the comments area. But that's it with the video. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll talk to you all very soon.